Am I looking in the camera? To you? Okay. My name is Carl Hancock Rux, and I'm a writer and a playwright and a poet and a singer and a multidisciplinary artist. Lincoln Center called me and asked me would I help them create a Juneteenth celebration. I wasn't sure, but I wanted to be responsible for it because I had mixed feelings about Juneteenth and its history and what I, how I felt like it, it had been celebrated in the past. But I asked them, will you allow me to do it the way I want to do it? And they said yes. And so what I really wanted to do it was to have a dream that dreamed back at me, right? To have a conversant dream. The title is from Toni Morrison's book, A Mercy. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. His dream actually dreamt back at him. In 1968, it would say, you know, Martin, you're not gonna live much longer. He knew that, right? He said, I may not get there with you, right? So his dream was dreaming back at him, and he was very clear about that. We have to constantly be in conversations with our dreams, our hopes, and our ambitions in order to change the world. A dream and I want him back. Give him back. So part one, I had the actress Stephanie Berry, who was performing as a 200-year-old uh, enslaved woman who had freed herself and somehow wandered up here. And I wanted her to wonder what was going on as she's looking up at these tall buildings and she's got her bouquet of cotton. She's angry because there's this celebration, nobody really invited her to it. And she's also wondering, what does it all really mean? I can hear Missy right now. Ah! <laughs> I pull a leg. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. But then the second place that we get to are the, the water fairies. Nona Hendricks, Kimberly Nicole, Marcel Davies Lashley are ushering people to get to the water, which is a metaphor for getting to the other side from where you are, right? To, you're getting over, whatever, whatever the water is, right? Just get from there to over here. And then I thought about, well, once we cross the water, and once we get to what we think might be freedom in America, this big thing that we call America, which is quite abstract, is it everything that we hope for? And we know by history that it has not been. And then from there, we, we, we journey, we take that long walk around, and we find Helga, who's 30 feet in the air, Helga Davis, dressed as an abstract America, singing the national anthem in her own crazy way while she's got the servant who she's yelling at. That was a symbol of that America has not always been what people have hoped that it would be. It's only going to be what we want it to be when we all collectively make it that. Where are we? Where are we? Then the, and then I wanted everybody to finally get to this, a joyous place, you know, this concert with Toshi Regan, and who was the daughter of Bernice Johnson Re Regan. I felt like she was the right person to close the show out and to, you know, allow the audience to have a church experience, have a, a rock and roll experience, just have some good fun. This can't be a final place. This cannot be. This can't be. You can't just go home and rest on your laurels and be like, I had a great time, that was lovely. If you came here and had a good time tonight and you're not thinking about how you vote and who you are enslaving, then this didn't mean anything. I would want them to begin to think about their own emancipation. I keep saying it throughout the concert, but in a way I'm, I'm, I'm proclaiming it, you know, Speaking what is not into existence. Speaking what is not into existence. It's the history of Juneteenth. What it really means to me is a call to arms, a call for us all to get together and to really discuss freedom. 
I'm waiting until I have to march again to find out that somebody else got shot by the police. And then I'll realize that, oh, we weren't, we weren't free, right? Uh, God forbid, God forbid. But, but I, I don't, I wouldn't be surprised because it's been the history of this country in so many ways. Now, I don't really know what the country's going to do, but I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue to march. I'm going to continue to be ugly and nasty and loud. I'm going to continue to be nice, even when I have to be nice, you know? And every time somebody gets shot or arrested, I'll be there as much as I can. I'll be there until we realize that that is also our bondage. That is also bondage. That is also enslavement. We're not free until we are all free. We're not emancipated until we are all emancipated. You know, free your mind and everybody else will follow.